Yes! Finally, guys, I've got the PlayStation VR 2 working successfully on PC. And if you're still having problems with the connection of the controllers, well, I have three solutions that will likely fix your problem. Share this video if it helps you out. And if it does end up fixing your problem and you end up diving into Alex, give it a like and subscribe and join the community for more Alex-like solutions and fun. Let's get into it. So it's pretty easy to tell if you're having this problem with the controllers on the PlayStation VR 2 with the PC. If you watch my setup video, you'll see that I had the problem. It was very clear because I had issues with it actually even showing. I couldn't even navigate in the Steam VR home room. Pressing the recenter button on the PlayStation VR 2 controller didn't even work. Whole bunch of issues. It would connect and stay connected, but it wouldn't operate properly. It was almost like it's not getting enough juice or something or something along those lines. So it's very obvious when you have these problems because when it is working, I can definitely say to you, it works perfect when it's working. Is there any oddities that's going on it's because you've got this issue or one of these variants of this issue and the oddities that comes with it. So if you're having problems getting the tracking to work with the PlayStation VR 2 via the PC adapter, I've identified that the main problem is a hardware problem. And there are three ways for you to solve this. The third one being the way I solved it. So the first one being drivers for your Bluetooth. Now, this means the specific website, I'm not going through Windows. Windows will say that you got drivers already and it's all good. The second solution is a more powerful, spendy Bluetooth. Not ideal because you probably already spent a bunch of money already if you've got this device, much less getting more stuff on top of more stuff. And the third solution, my fix, which is basically updating the chipset drivers, as I'm, as I'm calling it, the motherboard drivers itself. Again, not something that works with using Windows update or device manager method update driver and so forth. So many of you may have probably done that already and like, oh, it doesn't work. Stay tuned and timestamps are available for each solution to save you time. Let's go into the first one. So solution one is going to be based on the video you've seen on your screen right now, which is from Jammy Hero, a great name for a VR channel, I do say to so myself, which basically is talking specifically about how you deal with fixing the problem if you're using a separate third party dongle, like the recommended TP-Link uh, UB500, which I won't be using because I'm using my internal one, which I'm going to talk about in the third solution. But if you're using this dongle here, you want to watch this video, I'll summarize what the ideology of it is. So essentially, watching this video, he tells you to essentially go to here. I'm saying essentially a lot, which is the TP-Link official site. And what you want to do is you want to get the official download for the actual device itself, which in this case, if it's this one, should be V26. Get it for the right system. Obviously, you download that. And then you want to go into the device manager, add the device and so forth, go into update. In fact, let me just see if I can show you that. Go into your start menu here. You type in device manager. You open it up. I've got it open already. Once you have it open, you're going to go into Bluetooth and you'll look for your device. And in this case, I've not got this connected, obviously. So this will be my default one. It's my internal one. But you go into the properties or you can go to update driver as well. Should lead to the same thing. And then you'll want to go to browse to my browse my computer for drivers. I mean, I'm going for the same thing he shows you in the video. And then you go to the folder, find the file and let it do its thing. Because if you go and do it via the other method, which is search automatically for drivers, pretty much Windows is going to tell you that you've already got the best driver for the thing and you're going to get no result. And that's the key thing. Here. I think people are doing it like this or they're just assuming that it's already up to date because Windows tells them otherwise. So this is the key thing with pretty much two of the solutions here, which is you need to actually select the file itself and do it manually or go into the file once you've exported the zip and run the exe that might work as well. I'm not sure about that one, but you have to explicitly install it, not let Windows tell you that's all good and ignore it. On top of that, that solution itself, he also advises about the extension cable. So using an extension cable uh, and putting it in a USB 2 slot, I believe he said as well, and then keeping it away from the actual parts and elements of the PC or the actual controllers themselves, where you say it doesn't cause tracking issues. So you might have to do that on top of it. But again, it's all in the video here. I don't want to regurgitate too much. I think he's done a great job of it already. So I don't need to kind of go through the same thing. But that's the idea. Install the drivers from the website itself, get the latest driver, install it manually, not through Windows automatically. Otherwise, Windows will say it's already updated. You might need to use a dongle as well and then follow whatever other steps are in there. And then that should work. According to him, it worked perfectly after that. As you uh, saw in my video, it's working perfectly with the first solution. So now the second solution, I guess. Solution number two is from another colleague, Game on Scorpion. 
or Scorpio even. And this one's an appropriate name because it's a stinging solution because it stings your wallet. Yes, this second solution involves you basically buying a heavyweight Bluetooth device. So I'm just going to get to that point here. He talks about how many people recommend this one that we've seen here, which is true. This is the, 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 the first most one in Sony's own official list on the PlayStation. And then brings out this massive big boy Goliath kind of like looks like the Christ tier of Wi-Fi Bluetooth combos. So essentially gets a massive, expensive TP-Link version here that essentially solves this solution, I think, solves this problem from what I remember the video. So essentially you're going to have to buy another device that goes internally into your motherboard, which will be a lot stronger than the dongle devices. And that's how you solve the problem with it because you're going to be using a more powerful Bluetooth, which is going to allow the connection to be more solid and less weird, odd or faulty. So according to his solution, it's not powerful enough and that's why it's not working. Maybe, I don't know. I'll have to use something else. I'm not going to use this for anymore. But um, yeah, buy an expensive device and then install it and do the thing. That's solution number two. It's not ideal because you already have to buy a bunch of stuff or you probably already bought a third separate dongle. I didn't even end up needing this, but I ended up buying it. You probably bought it as well. Which is another 15 pounds of the cost on top of the 50, 60 dollars that you have to pay for the adapter itself as it is. So it's an option, not the most ideal, but if all else fails, this might work for you. And now the solution I discovered myself, this is my solution, the third solution, and the one that might save you extra money because you might not even need to buy any dongle, either from the second solution or the first one if you haven't already purchased, I might save you some money here. If you end up buying something as well, do use my Amazon links. If you want to thank me, buy some socks on Amazon or something, even though it's nothing to do with VR, but you know what I mean. Um, rip controller. So essentially with this solution, what you're doing again, a bit like the first one is you are updating the drivers via the chipset or the motherboard or the motherboard version of your Bluetooth. Now, essentially that same device that you saw in solution two is what I have with my motherboard already. So my one is the ROG Strix uh, B550F gaming Wi-Fi 2. The Wi-Fi device itself is combined with Bluetooth, just like you saw in solution two. And as he mentions in that video, it, it's more powerful than your dongle one. So all I had to do was actually update the drivers because before that it wasn't working. As you will see, if you haven't seen my MSAP video, that will give you the, the process that I have to set up, by the way. So you should check that out. And then I have an unboxing video as well. And we'll have a combined version at some point as well. The whole thing you just watch and binge if you want to. Yeah, it wasn't working probably, even though I had the hardware for it. And this is where you need to update your stuff. So there's a couple of ways to do this, or two ways essentially. Again, you cannot use Windows Device Manager update drivers and all that kind of stuff because Windows will say you've got all the stuff already. You need to actually go to your motherboard's manufacturer. In this case, mine is Asus ROG. You select the right model, very important you select the right model and make sure you're selecting the right operating system. In my case, that's Windows 11, 64-bit obviously. And you can see here is a whole bunch of things. Now, what might be easier for you to do, every manufacturer has this pretty much. So in my case, it's Asus. If you have MSI or what have you, there's going to be, they're going to have their own equivalent of this. The software I used to update all my stuff was this utility called Armory Crate. Now, Armory Crate is essentially a UI version, convenience version of keeping your stuff up to date and installing a bunch of things. Interestingly, this has actually even got an option in my motherboard, CMOS, where it actually installs this by default. So essentially what it looks like, I say essentially a lot, I might say essentially too much that my version of, you know what I mean or something, I don't know. So when we go into Armory Crate, you can see your style of dashboard typically. And this will be similar to you if you're using MSI. I've got like the MSI one installed as well. And that's because of my keyboard, my keyboard lights and so forth. So it will be similar. I'll just run the MSI or if I've not oh, actually, I've turned it off, I'm gonna me get it open. So with MSI Center, it's similar to Asus's Armory Crate. So you can see this is my keyboard, the lights and that kind of stuff. But as you have more, if you have more system level stuff, it will be able to do the same thing. So whatever your si system is, Gigabyte or whatever you, you'll have something that's the equivalent of this, where you can go and update stuff and um, find a bunch of stuff. At least I think it's this software in this case. Should be this one, but you get the idea. It'll be something similar to this is what I'm trying to say. A kind of a facsimile to some degree. So in this case with Armory Crate, you go to the dashboard, yeah, because I've got a graphics card that's also an Asus after having changed my MSI one that was faulty. I believe it was MSI one. One of them, anyway. Nothing wrong with MSI, by the way, though. I just had a 
bad luck with that. And you'll be going to like something like sentence and then you'll go to update center in this case. And again, you're looking for something similar or you can go to the website and do it this way. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff. And some people have said that if you install some things with some of the manufacturers of motherboards, that it can slow some things down. So don't be necessarily installing every single thing. And um, if you don't know what it's for, or you don't know, or you don't need it necessarily. In my case, I'm installing everything and updating everything has been fine. Um, but yeah, in this case, I believe it's like this one or one of them. I don't even know which one it is, but you get the idea. You'll go to check for updates and you'll update the specific thing or update all. And then that's one way of doing it. That's kind of the, the easier way of doing it. Otherwise, you go to your website of your motherboard manufacturer. You find a specific thing you need to download. In this case, it would be the Bluetooth one here. MediaTek Bluetooth driver, blah, 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 blah. And then you would install that. I don't know how that looks as far as um, if it's an X or a zip. It looks like it's a zip and you export that the zip and then run the thing. Or you can go into the device manager and find the drivers in your computer after you export the, the contents of the zip. And then you'll be good to go update that and that should work because essentially this problem seems to be the bluetooth hardware itself or the drivers in some way or other seems to be the common thread so people are updating one way and thinking it's the same as updating the way that you need to which is via the website manufacturer level whether it be the third party or your internal motherboard settings and this sort of works for me and now it's all working perfect and it's all connected up beautifully and works just as good as the playstation vr2 even connecting really easily at the press of a button up to the up to the Etsy. Perfect. So as you can see, even though it's showing the freaking what is that, another Meta Quest 2 controller? You can see that I'll ignore the cage, I've got to figure out the adjustments. But if you can see in comparison to my sub video, which is still accurate and everything for you guys, it's perfect if you haven't watched it already. But now you can see the actual controls are working. And it's not just me pressing this button here and wondering where that's because that's the thing, even though it, it can work, but like stuff like that. Stuff like that will work, but you won't see like the, the controllers you barely saw and I couldn't move. So it's kind of weird because you might think it's working. There's vibration when I'm moving around here. You probably can't hear the sounds because I haven't set the audio source for this and I'm not using my capture card for this here. I'm just using display capture right now. Just imagine you can hear the birds and the bees here. Um, I can hear it from my speakers, might be able to hear it from here. You can see it's working perfectly. Did that butterfly just try and land on my... Wow. All right, so yeah, well, you can see my um, Guardian cage thing here, which is fine. It's pretty sweet, works nice and clean. It's fine, Alex, again, see, I might have to change some capture sentence for you guys. You can see here, look, it switches to the, if it's showing, you can see the switches to the PlayStation VR2 controllers here. And it's working perfectly. I just need to adjust my Guardian or what have you, because this cage shows a bit too much. I think I can change the setting for that as well. And um, I think it seems to sometimes look a little bit less aggressively when my hands are up. So it seems to think I'm standing. As you can kind of see, maybe. But it seems to be better now that I've quickly changed the settings around. And now, holding down this button. I have to mute real quickly. Just to see. <clears throat> so you guys can't hear what I say at the same time. So there you go. So I've triggered to start. You can see the actual controller is showing. And I have to keep looking here because I'm not sure. It seems to be now we're heavily right sided rather than left sided. Triggered start. Looks dope. How it sounds good. I don't like this capture sound and not to just kind of demonstrate to you guys that things all working. Now, hopefully, it's referred this work your time. And again, because if it's helped you out, let me know in the comments. And if you've got questions and stuff, share them in the comments so that they might be up for and answer them as well, including myself. I answer all comments as much as I'm able to, unlike other places. It seems like my system's getting a little bit bogged down a little bit now, which is fine. I've got something running on kind of kind of doing it off the cuff a little bit now, so it's a bit laggy. That's not to do with my it's not to do with the sound or the solution. This is just like something's running on my PC head. So um yeah we will start a new game on it like it was a super lag. But yeah there you go. That should get you guys started successfully if you're having track control problems like me and some of you were saying in the comments you're having this problem hopefully i've solved your problem it took me a few hours but i got it done get ready for alex and other vr games via the playstation vr2 on pc in addition to the questness yes <laughs>